The chateau into which my valet had ventured to make forcible entrance was one of those piles of commingled gloom and grandeur which have so long frowned among the Apennines. To all appearance, it had been temporarily and very lately abandoned. We established ourselves in one of the smallest and least sumptuously furnished apartments. It lay in a remote turret of the building. Its walls were hung with tapestry together with an unusually great number of very spirited modern paintings. In these paintings, my incipient delirium, perhaps, had caused me to take a deep interest, so that I bade Pedro to light the tongues of a tall candelabrum which stood by the head of my bed. Long, long I read of a small volume which had been found upon the pillow, and which purported to criticize and describe them. The position of the candelabrum displeased me. I placed it so as to throw its rays more fully upon the book. The rays of the numerous candles now fell within a niche of the room which had hitherto been thrown into deep shade by one of the bedposts. I thus saw in vivid light a picture all unnoticed before. It was the portrait of a young girl just ripening into womanhood. Turning to the number which designated the oval portrait, I read the vague and quaint words which follow. She was a maiden of rarest beauty, and not more lovely than full of glee, and evil was the hour when she saw and loved and wedded the painter, he passionate, studious, austere, and having already a bride in his art. It was thus a terrible thing for this lady to hear the painter speak of his desire to portray even his young bride. But she was humble and obedient, and sat meekly for many weeks in the dark. But he, the painter, took glory in his work, which went on from hour to hour and from day to day, and he was a passionate and wild and moody man who became lost in reveries. The painter had grown wild with the ardor of his work and turned his eyes from the canvas rarely, even to regard the countenance of his wife. And when many weeks had passed but little remained to do save one brush upon the mouth and one tint upon the eye, the brush was given and then the tint was placed and for a moment the painter stood entranced with the work he had wrought. But while yet he gazed, he grew tremulous and very pallid and aghast, crying in a loud voice, This is indeed life itself, and turned to regard his beloved. She was dead.